Oh, first official New Things Day for this year, I believe. The other one was kind of a catch-up New Things Day. This is the first actual New Things Day of things I uh, of new books, uh, meaning books from this week, my new comic book day, uh, as well as I also bought some more board games. Depending on how long this takes, maybe I'll get back into showing some of the books that I still have not worked my way through, even though I bought more since these, but they haven't made their way to my shelves. Well, this stack you see right here, it doesn't count. That's for my, uh, I plan on making my 2016 red books video. Gotta find, I'm missing two books somewhere in my mess. I, there's two books that I cannot find that I know I have, and I, because I read them last year, I uh, just don't know where they are. But that is not part of it. That Just ignore it. Just block it out. Hey. Hey, just, just pretend, pretend they're out there. Uh, but first, new comics, uh, DC, Marvel, Archie. Archie's in the top three now. We got DC, Marvel. Nope, not in that order. They're, they're equal. DC, Marvel, same place. And then Archie. I don't even have any image books. I'm all about Archie. Archie is where it's at. I'll read every Archie book. Every one. Except for little Archies. Not for me. First up, uh, Action Comics, number 971. Love me some soups. I don't like soup, though. <laughs> Superwoman number six. This book is coming out, uh, it has to be monthly. I'm liking it, and it is tying into other, like, it is tying into Action Comics a little bit, I believe. But it's just, it seems there's a lot of time in between each issue. I don't think it would seem that long if it wasn't for the fact that Action is coming out every two weeks. Uh, Detective 948. It looks like this is where the Batwoman uh, arc begins. And it's going to be interesting. To I mean, the, it looks great. I, I flip it through it. It looks like I'm really going to enjoy it. I love what the art's looking like. Um, art by Ben Oliver. I've just never been... I've never been the biggest Batwoman fan. I loved the, what was it, the New 52 run. The, the art in that was fantastic and it drew me in. Uh, but I was on Detective kind of for Batman. But I, I enjoyed her being a part of the team. I enjoyed her being a main part of the team. I just don't know if I necessarily am interested in that character by itself. So we'll see how, how big of a part Batman plays in this. We'll see how big of a part other people play in it. Uh, which will decide whether I move forward with Detective or not. Let's be honest, though. I don't drop anything, so it doesn't matter. Next up, Wonder Woman 14. Gorgeous cover. Uh, I'm loving this. Uh, are the new arcs starting yet, or is this the last one? I uh, know this is the finale. So, the finale of year one. New Superman, number seven. I have no idea what he's eating. I wish I knew. But Batman's on the cover. But I don't know what uh, new Superman there is eating. Kind of interested. Kind of interested. Supergirl number five. Got a lot of books this week, by the way. And as I flip through them, I even said to myself, I don't know if there's any books that I want to cut. I don't know. If I if I needed to trim my pull down, I don't even know what books I would want to cut because I, I'm kind of enjoying everything I'm reading. This included. This is not, the art style of this is not something that normally would be something I go for. But it's really working for the story, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, art is by um, Michael. I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher his name, and I apologize. Oh, that, no, that's the colorist. I could say I could say the artist's name, Brian Ching. Um, no, I have the 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 color artist or the colorist's name is uh, uh, Michael A T I Y E H. Michael Adia. I'm not sure, but. Uh, it's it's not a, it's it's kind of like uh, Cave Carson. Not the not I'm not comparing the artwork. I just mean in terms of things I usually like and things that I'm enjoying and that are fitting well with the storyline. And I'm enjoying it because of that. Supergirl and Cave Carson are kind of in the same boat. Whereas not normal art styles I seek out. Yet I'm enjoying them both in the books they're in. Here it is, the big one for this week that I'm so excited to read, uh, and I will eventually. 
jump on, not jump on. I will eventually go back. I will get all the covers because they are gorgeous. I tweeted a picture of all of them out earlier. I, just, I was just super stoked. Uh, by the way, my Twitter is at Breakdown Brand if you want to follow me at Breakdown Brand. Justice League, Power Rangers. To my... I, I feel like Heroes is overused. Idols is has a kind of a negative connotation at this point. Uh, but just two of the fictional characters that possibly mean more to me than almost all others. Uh, the Green Ranger and Superman, they both have played major roles. And I mean, can I say who I am today? Because I'm almost positive that's true. Uh, without Green Ranger, I don't know where I'd be at this point. And without Superman, I don't know where I'd be. And I had to grab this cover. All the covers were phenomenal. I loved every one of the covers. And I will go back and get them all eventually. But this is the one I needed to have. Uh, because Green Ranger and Supes, it's there's no comparison. That's 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 the big two for me. Now we're getting into Marvel, Power Man and Iron Fist number twelve. I've loved this story. I've loved this book. Uh, it 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 seems that this book is kind of under the radar though. I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, and I really urge you to go read this book because it's it's great. It feels different. It, the, the dialogue is clean and fresh. Uh, and there's a lot of it. I mean, maybe you don't like a dialogue-heavy book, but there's enough action in this that it doesn't get bogged down in the dialogue. I highly recommend Power Man Iron Fist. I, I, I've already It's already lost cause for most of my favorite books. Um, I urged people to hop on the vision. I guess that ended naturally, though. It wasn't really canceled. Um, and it appears that Scarlet Witch may be ending just because I didn't see it in previews last week. Two weeks ago? Last week? Whenever previews came out, I didn't see a solicitation for another issue. So I can't urge you to read that anymore. So read Power Man Iron Fist because it's great, and I don't want that book to go anywhere. Silk, number 16, another Clone Conspiracy tie-in. I like Silk's version of Clone Conspiracy because that's the only version of Clone Conspiracy I'm reading. That's the only bit of Clone Conspiracy I get. And Silk is just a great book. I, I love everything about it. And there's enough Silk in here. That this book doesn't get, this book doesn't drown in the tie-in. This there's enough of the Silk story, enough of Silk herself. I mean, there's shit going on. I don't know what's happening, but context clues, you know, context clues get you where you need to be at all times. Inhumans versus X Men number two, pretty excited. I'm actually, I'm, I'm confused a bit at how this isn't like a bigger deal. How Monsters Unleashed is going to be this huge thing. I don't know when that starts, though. I don't know if that starts at the same time as this, but this seems... The the first one... I mean, Death of X carried some weight, but I feel like number one carried some serious weight, and it wasn't really... It didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, maybe? Like, when I read it, I felt like there was some serious weight to it, but then I don't really... It doesn't, I don't see kind of any... Uh, effects anywhere else, other than the X books, I guess. I mean, a little bit of the Inhumans books. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a huge Inhumans fan. I'm only reading one X-Book, so maybe that's me only reading one side of it. Uh, speaking of X-Book, I'm reading Uncanny X-Men number 17. I feel like I haven't had this book in ever. I also feel like it, there's not 17 of these. Because I'm pretty sure I've been on this since the beginning. And I don't remember 17. I don't remember getting 17 of these. I've enjoyed them. And I like what's going on. Uh, but this is an Inhumans vs. X-Men tie-in. So that'll be fun to see what's going on there. Mighty Thor number fifteen, Gladiator on the cover. That's a good. That's a good sign. And this is the uh, the Asgard Shi'ar war starts. So that's always going to be fun. Anytime you have the Shi'ar fighting anybody, Gladiator's going to be a badass. So looking forward to that. Jason Aaron could write the back of a cereal. That doesn't count because I love cereal. Jason Aaron could write a billboard, and I spend time reading it and analyzing it because I love everything about it. And I got two back-to-back -back books that I wasn't on, read them uh, when I was at work off the shelves, and kind of fell in love with them. So, Occupy Avengers number three, uh, I loved issue one. I thought issue one was fantastic. Issue two was a little light and weak for me. Hopefully it comes through with issue three. Uh, I, I like the art. I like a lot about this book. Uh, I like how it's kind of, in a lesser extent, not not in your face, but it's addressing kind of um, 
issues in society and issues in you know just the world in general. Uh, artist on this, by the way, is uh, Carlos Pincheco. And I, I'm enjoying it. I'll see. It. Well, I'm I'm interested to see how number three goes, especially because I'm not familiar with Nighthawk almost at all. So see if that plays into it at all. This book I absolutely love. This is Full Killer number three. <laughs> Meta cover. And I never anticipated to like this book as much as I did. I, I also loved number two. So uh, I th this is a book that I want to urge some. I want to urge you to read it now because I feel like this is a book that's on a very short leash. At least give it a shot. Uh, if you want, I have the download codes for one and two. I'll give you my codes if you want to try it out because I, I want you to read this book. Um, I don't want this book to go anywhere. I want people to give it a shot. I want people to read it because I really have enjoyed it. And I think other people will, but the fact that it's a full killer book, it, it I understand the hesitation, but try it. Deadpool 24. What can I say about Deadpool? Honestly, I, I have been on Deadpool since I started collecting books. I actually looked at it today and said, oh, of course I have Deadpool. It came out today. I mean, it's not that I'm unexcited because I actually do enjoy what Jerry Dugan is doing. It's just, it's less excitement than a lot of other books I'm reading. I still enjoy it when I read it. And there have been some dynamite issues, but it's, I feel like the consistency isn't exactly always there. Uncanny Avengers 19. Just rename the book Cable, please. I, that's all I want. Although there is a cable book coming and I am excited. Uh, I'll probably get five issues of that and then I'll cancel it. So it looks like Red Skull is actually uh, back and doing something in here. So that story arc is continuing. And by continuing, I mean coming back because it hasn't been around in 12 issues. Uh, Reggie and Me, number two. Oh my God, do I love that cover. Both their dogs are there. It's It's a good time. This book is is great. I actually, it's, it's well, I can't say great because it's issue two. I loved issue one. And if issue two is anything similar to issue one, I wish it wasn't a miniseries. I wish it would continue. I wish it would be a longer series, uh, an ongoing, if you will. And lastly, but not leastly, Jughead, number 12, just consistently one of my favorite books that comes out. I love Jughead. I I want everybody to read Jughead. I want everybody to read all the Archie books, but Jughead is this book is special. I mean, this book has it has such a good it has so much heart behind it, and it has there's different levels of humor in every issue for whoever's reading it. Um, I love it. I love Ryan North and Derek Charm on this. I loved when uh, Chip Zdarsky was writing it. So Jughead is the way to go. Books are out, now the comics are out of the way. Uh, uh, if anybody knows those those game shops that open up around Christmas time in malls, I don't know if they're, I don't know if you have them in your area, I don't know what they would be called, but they're kind of like seasonal where they have board games and just kind of gifts. Uh, well, post Christmas, they obviously have huge sales. I ended up popping in a couple of them this weekend, grabbed a few things half off. Some things I probably wouldn't normally have bought, in, especially at full price, but at half price, I couldn't pass it up. Uh, first, I got a game box. It's Family Feud Marvel Edition. And I I simply got this because I want to be, I like to host. And I mean, it's weird. I love playing games too, but I also love hosting. And I pulled out a couple cards and went through them, and I forgot how opinion based Family Feud is and how weird this is. So I don't know exactly if this will be fun to play, but going to give it a shot. Uh, we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll keep you updated. Next up, I got Munchkin, Nightmare Before Christmas edition. I'm familiar with Munchkin as far as I know the game. I've never played it, uh, and I've, I, I've yet to break this open to try it. So I'm excited. And it, it being Nightmare Before Christmas is getting me even more excited because I just want to, I just want to battle Oogie Boogie. That's all I want to do. And got this at a hell of a deal. Next up, I got Adventure Time Card Wars. 
I got BMO versus Lady Raincorn and Princess Bubblegum versus Lumpy Space Princess. If you've watched, it's awful over there. If you've watched Adventure Time and you've seen the Card Wars episode, you know how crazy the game is. I, I've opened these up. We've looked at the decks, but we have yet to try to play it. It seems super complicated, which means uh, when I hit that level of I understand, it's going to be that much more rewarding. So I'm actually excited to get into that. Uh, speaking of hosting, I, I bought these the day prior to buying the Family Food game box. Uh, I got Jeopardy, and I did my best Alex Trebek impression and loved hosting. I, I, I love it. I love being the host. Um, I, it might be a control thing. I might have something going on uh, that I like to keep things moving. I like to keep I don't know, in control. I don't know. I still love the play. But hosting is fun as well for me. And I know a lot of people don't really like doing that, so. Uh, but this was fun. So many shits are hard. Uh, Final Jeopardy, it's, and then, oh, it's, it's, it's hit or miss. The problem I have with this is there's only so many Final Jeopardy cards. I feel like after you play it so many times, you're just done. So I hope either they come out with more cards or you're kind of done. Or you know it, you look like a genius around people who've never played it before. Next is this game that I knew nothing about. But it won all kinds of awards, including the, well, it was nominated for the Golden Geek Award. Uh, but it won all kinds of other awards. Uh, it's Concept. And I don't know how to explain it. All I can do is read the back, because I've yet to play it. We I took it out, read the rulebook a little bit. And it's uh, it says, thanks to Concept, you no longer need to talk in order to communicate. By combining universal icons, you get others to guess hundreds of objects, titles, and characters. And I don't know if you can see, um, it, you like put these little markers on here with your teammate and try to get the other team to guess what it is. As you see, uh, it's uh, it's an animal, it's yellow, black, uh, small, and it flies, it would be B. Uh, but some of them are crazy. Some of them, every card has three different difficulty levels and the hardest difficulty is wild. Uh, so, it's going to be very interesting to see where this goes. I feel like it could be very good. It's just getting there. It's just getting to that point where you get it. It works. You can play it. Um, I'm excited to try, though. I'm excited to start. And then lastly, uh, picked up Harry Potter, the Magical Beasts board game. Uh, I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan. Uh, I actually I enjoyed Fantastic Beasts. I did enjoy that. But Harry Potter itself, I'm not that big of a Harry Potter fan. But Terra is, and I saw this. And the fact, if it was just a game, I don't know, you know, I don't know if I would have grabbed it. But it had something interesting I've never seen before. The board is actually, it's, it's, it's like a hinged board. And it flips during gameplay back and forth. So you alter between outside and inside of Hogwarts. That is astonishing. I love that dynamic. I love the idea of it. I love everything about it. So I'm interested to see how this will play out. Hopefully they spent the same amount of time on gameplay on planning out gameplay as they did the board uh, that's the that's the only thing i worry about though and now i mean i might as well go through some books right um i could play them a little game where i guess what year they were published i don't even know where to start here i guess uh first up wild kitty by mead by lt mead uh, that's not a dust jacket, that is kind of, it's, it's embossed is the wrong word. Uh, it's on the, the hardback. Um, published by Donahue, it looks like. And, ooh, there's something written. Oh, well, there's years here, so we know it's before there. Um, to Margaret Coleman, for attending school every day during the term, 1910-1911. Bessie Heipel, teacher. You know, that's pretty sweet. Uh, actually, that, that's that's pretty, pretty fucking awesome. Is that a girl didn't miss a day of school in the, in the 1910-1911 term, and her teacher got her this book. That's awesome. I, I'm actually excited. It's got to be a long time before I get to read this. Guys, I have a lot of books. They just keep coming. And then I keep getting more books that I wanted to read. Guys, people write books all the time. I have trouble keeping up with the books I have. New books come out, I gotta read those. 
it's never ending. Never ending. Um, the Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. You can tell it was definitely in a library. This is the Modern Students Library Edition. Mini, it's like kind of like a miniature hardback. Um, there's no cover price. I don't know on this. I don't, that last one I, I couldn't find, but 1910-1911 in the in the written thing pulled, tells me it was around there. I'm gonna guess on this little Modern Students Library Edition. Uh, I feel like it's older. I'm gonna go. Actually, I don't think it's older than that. Uh, I'm gonna go 19. 50. Uh, 1950 on the dot for this. And this is uh, published by Charles Shribner Sons. And I'm way wrong. Way wrong. 1917. 1917 on that. Next up, <laughs> by the way, the way that these stacks are, it's obvious that I got a whole lot of stuff. Just different things. They're not in any order. They might be order in size a bit, so the stacks wouldn't fall over. This is Michael Crichton Disclosure. Uh, I mean, if you've watched my End of the Words videos, you know my feelings on the one book I read by Michael Crichton, which was Congo. I'm not going to judge him off that one book, um, but we'll see how this is going in. Uh, cover price on this is, there isn't one. Uh, there isn't one. Uh, but I'm gonna guess this is a 95 pressing in that in 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 that realm. I'm gonna go 95. Um, published by Alfred A. Knopf. Uh, copyright 1993. Um, I believe it's first edition. I guess it's the first edition. Um, Michael Crichton disclosure. Uh, favorite poems of love and romance. Thwing. I don't know if it's compiled by Thwing or if they're all Thwing poems, uh, but Triangle Books, published by Triangle Books, and I just saw the copyright. I'm bad at this. So far this year, I'm like 0 for 4 on being able to play this game correctly. Um, Yeah, they're selected by Walter E. Thwing. What a great name, guys. Thwing. Uh, this is copyright 1941. Um, there's some interesting things in here. Shall we do a reading? To Celia. By Ben Johnson. Drink to me only with thine eyes, and I will pledge with mine. Or leave a kiss but in the cup, and I'll not look for wine. The thirst that for the soul doth rise, doth ask a drink divine. But might I of Jove's nectar sup, I would not change for thine. I sent thee late a rosy wreath, not so much honoring thee, as giving it a hope that there it could not withered be. But thou thereon didst only breathe, and sentest it back to me. Since when it grows and smells, I swear, not of itself, but thee. I actually really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed doing it, too. I didn't. I thought that would be a dull thing, and I thought that it would be awful, and I thought I would butcher it. I think I did okay. Uh, and I actually really, I enjoyed that a lot, and I enjoyed doing it. So, tune in next week when I have a poetry show where I just read poetry like an asshole. Next up, My Heart Has 17 Rooms by Carol Bartholomew. Hardback, library bound. Cover price is $3.75. Here we go. We know how to do the game. We're playing the game now. $3.75. 1964. 1964 on this. My guess. Published by the Macmillan Company. Uh, this is a seventh printing. Original published in 1959. Seventh printing published 1962. That's close. That's a win. Next up, another library bound. The Satanic Mill by Ottfried Prusler. Prusler? Ottfried Prusler. It's a great cover, though. Satanic Mill by Ottfried Prusler. $4.95 cover price. So I'm going to stick with it. 1965. 1965 on this. Published by the Macmillan Company again. And I'm off a little farther. This is 1973 that came out. 1973. Uh, one more, then I'll get out of your hair and maybe waste more of your time if I do my other video and you watch that, because the other one will be a lot more rambling. Um, Count Zero, a science fiction novel by William Gibson. 
Uh, he's on the back there. That looks like a guy who could write some damn good science fiction. Uh, I don't mean to judge a guy by how he looks, but he chose to put that on there, meaning he knows what it looks like. He looks like a guy's going to write some damn good science fiction. Uh, Count Zero by William Gibson. fifteen ninety five cover price. Pretty expensive. Uh, I'm going to go 1987. That has to be way too late. 1987, and we have published by Arbor House. 1986! It's a win. It's a win. It's a win. Doubt of myself, but it's a win. It's a win. Not soda. It's actually sparkling water. Um, but that's it. Done. Done with New Things Day. Hope you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter at Breakdown Brand, B R E A K D O W N B R A N D. Um, you can also follow my uh, my podcast. I do with a friend of mine, Earbones Podcast. We should do. Our, we should be recording our first uh, our first issue. We kind of call them our first episode of the year uh, this weekend. Uh, it was supposed to be last like weekend, but things on the way. So. Things happen. Also, uh, we have we do video with it. We put on YouTube, um, so you can find that there. Oh, the podcast is at Earbones Podcast, I believe. Um, and you can find the, the website where it's at through that. Also, the YouTube is Earbones Comics. Earbones Comics, maybe. Um, I'll I might have the link in the thing. I don't know. It depends on what I'm doing, guys. Sometimes I get a little busy. And by busy, I mean lazy. <sighs> Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate you. Um, more than you know. If you watch this, I really do appreciate it more than you know. Um, nothing but love. I'm trying to figure out a way to hold the 18 books up that I got today, and it's not working how I wanted it to. I just know I want Jughead at the front. No, no, no. Just defeated. It's defeated. It won't fan properly. I'm not a magician. I don't know how to fan things. Thank you for watching. I was going to try to see how long I could do it, and then you still be there, but realize there's no payoff for me, because I wouldn't know if you're there, and you're probably not here now.